Hello everybody, welcome to the Ikigami Kompo Daijin Grand Song Ceremony today, October 2nd, 2022. Um, we appreciate everybody that's here in person and online, um, and our service will start here shortly. Thank you. Prayer, page two. Let us seek the sacred mediation of the Ikigami Kongo Daijin sincerely and wholeheartedly each and every day. May we receive the mediation and with all our hearts and souls on this day, this very moment. Ikigami Kongo Ikigami Kongo Daijin Sama, Ikigami Kongo Daijin Sama, Ikigami Kongo Daijin Sama.
Records. Reverently, we invoke your name. You, our founder, practice the true and diligent faith. You devoted yourself to Kami, who were given blessings divine. Then the world opened before you, revealing the truth that Kami needs us as we need Kami. You accepted Kami's wish to give your life in mediation. Thus, the way of mediation of the Hiyomi Kunko Daijin was born. Countless numbers were saved, and people's burdens were lifted, and Kami too was fulfilled. The divine will was thus revealed. Kami thanked and praised you, Kunko Daijin. Years passed and the world changed. Hardships came one after another, but you were steadfast in your faith and followed Kami without question. Finally, it was revealed. The name of Tenji Kanano Kami. And Tenji Kanano Kami said, I send Niki Kami Hongo Daijin to bestow divine blessings and teach those who pray that Kami needs humanity as humanity needs Kami. With this great truth, Kami will flourish, prosperity be assured from generation to generation. You are God who served in mediation day and night, urging those who sought you to practice faith receive blessings, and become one with Kami. You devoted yourself to fulfilling Kami's wish that everyone be saved and become a Kami. Kami praised you, Hongo Daijin, for saving Kami and humanity. You completed the hundred days devotion and left this physical world on the day Kami said would be Hongo Daijin Day. Humbly we give thanks to you for the way of mediation that has been handed down from generation to generation through your disciples and theirs in turn, the way has spread far and wide. We are given wondrous blessings and filled with endless divine favor. We reflect on your life with love and reverently praise your great virtue. Main ceremonial prayer by the head of Fisher. Let's bow our heads in prayer.
Lord, we are eternally grateful for your blessing that allow this cycle of life to continue. So, Sam, we stand before you on this joyous festival day of October 2nd, 2022. I, Andrew, administer the Kongu Gyokai Portland on behalf of all the attendees here and the people who are praying from afar through this worship hall have gathered here today to hold our Ikigami Kongu Daijin Autumn Grand Ceremony in gratitude for his everlasting sacred mediation and the virtue passed down to us and to pray with a sincere heart for his life of service to you. This year marks the 139th year since his passing, when Ikigami Kongu Daijin left this physical world after leaving behind his legacy, your teachings to guide us moving forward. Being a Mitama spirit now, Kongu Daijin Sama is able to travel to all the sacred mediation seats around the world to speak through our mediators there, to bring Kami's divine message to those in need and help the people of this world. Dear great divine parent, we would like to express our deepest appreciation for the reverence to our founder, Higami Kungu Daijin Sama, for his efforts, sacrifices, and the dedication to mediation between Kami and people that has led to the revealing of Tenchi Kana no Kami's true divine nature and showed us the path to living a fulfilled, sustainable, and harmonious life. Through the teachings of Ikigami Gongu Daijin, we've learned by being conscientious of our hearts and changing ourselves through daily faith practice to reflect the heart of Kami, we can receive Kami's protection and blessings, as well as Kami's divine arrangements and instructions for every part of our daily lives. The Founder has been able to show us this way through his virtue he gained in the secret sacred mediation work of the Giyami Kongu Daishin. The mediation work would still continue today, 139 years after his passing. It is also through our successive Kongu Sama's prayers at the Hongu Hiromai, from early in the morning to late in the evening, every day, without missing a single day, since our founder received the divine call on October 21st, 1859, that we have been, we have been allowed to have your blessings with us today through their sacred work. With this daily prayers of our spiritual leader, through the Kyokais and the Senseis here in North America, Yiyami Kongu Daizen's endless divine virtue carries on to each and every one of us today, granting us the divine blessings of Tenji Kanenoku. For these wondrous workings, we express our deepest appreciation and strive to show our gratitude through our actions and goyo. Today, we offer these symbolic offerings to show our sincerity. The sacred Tamagushi offering, the various gifts from the Willamette Valley, Mount Hood, the Great Columbia River, and the beautiful Oregon coast, along with traditional keeping music and the sacred dance we present here today. Dear Tenji Kana no Kami, yet even while receiving such divine blessings through our own arrogance and complacency, we often feel we have achieved these things through our own efforts and strength. For these and the other irreverences we may have committed, knowingly or unknowingly, for our lack of appreciation, ignorance, and complacency that grows in our hearts, we humbly and sincerely apologize and pray to open our spiritual eyes and reform our ways. Allow us to take your lessons and implement them in our daily lives. Through this process, Please help us build a foundation of self-worth based upon you through our practice of faith that we can face our fears, walk forward into challenges with unwavering trust and hope, knowing that we are always in your good care and we will come through as better people. Grant us the courage to change ourselves, to change our community, and to be one step closer to changing the world to a community-centered world. Please allow all of us to fully embrace these opportunities which come before us to develop our faith with a heart of gratitude and a heart of learning and changing in the times of hardship and allow us to rejoice in the times of triumph, but always humble before you. Dear great divine spirit, to help us upon this path, we wholeheartedly pray that you guide and allow this Portland Kyokai to continue bestowing blessings of prosperity, happiness, and protection and guidance for our members and their families from generation to generation. For the senseis here, and the elders 
the Shindokai board members, and the Sunday school leaders. They may guide them and lead our Kyokai through our continuing activities to teach effectively to become more useful to you to help the people, your children, of this world. To help and guide the ministers and believers going forward from this worship hall and their propagation work to be living examples of your heart and virtue. To be able to spread this Konko faith at this Hiromai in our community and neighborhoods and throughout the world. For the KCNA leadership, to help guide the churches towards sharing this wonderful faith here in North America as we embrace the virtue of our founders, Higami Konko Daisen's sacred Totsugi mediation. Allow them to guide us into the future, adapting the teaching and theology to this new age of technology in the next generation. Therefore, being able to better fulfill Hamish's greatest wish to help the people suffering of this world. Dear Kamisama, lastly, to the virtue of this grand ceremony today, please bless all those who attend this service, as well as those who could not attend but are praying from afar. We ask for safe travel to the many people who are participating in the Gigami Gungu Odais and the Autumn Grand Ceremonies to be held at the various churches in the months and weeks to come as we start the season of celebration for our founder, Gigami Gungu Odais, and the divine virtue that he passed down from generation to generation and the bounty of the harvests and our communities that we share today. On this Gigami Gungu Odais, Autumn Grand Ceremony Day, we sincerely pray. Thank you. As you were. I don't fish it. Young 
adults, Mr. Matthew Uzunwechi. Adoration prayer. Let us recite adoration prayer on page six, excuse me, page seven in our prayer book. We lift our eyes in awe toward heaven soaring above. We lift our eyes in awe toward heaven soaring above. We bow our heads in prayer toward earth rich and deep, living in excess gifts of coming straight in. How happy and grateful we are. The mediation of Ikigami Hongo Daijin does not stop for a single day. The protection of the Divine Parent embraces all far and wide. The blessings of Kami flow without limit through all generations. The ways of Kami are mysterious and wondrous beyond our understanding. Day by day, every day, earnestly and reverently, we praise the virtues of Kami. We honor the power of Kami. Sacred Kiri Mai dance with Kiri Gaku music. Thank you. 
so nice and I hope next year I can at least wear a button down and look as nice as everybody else so but thank you so much. When I first met Andy Sensei and Lisa Sensei in the spring of 2021 here in this worship hall one of the first things they taught me was the principle of Ayo Kakyo or mutual interdependence. There is a quote from the life of Konko Daijin in the book Shine From Within that Andy Sensei and Lisa Sensei gave to me that day that illustrates this idea. Man exists because of Kami, and Kami exists because of man. Thus Kami supports man as Kami's child, and man supports Kami as his parent. There will be eternal prosperity through Ayo Kakeo, mutual interdependency. They explained to me that Kami-sama and humanity are meant to depend on one another. This conception of the divine immediately struck me as true. Kami-sama was not far off. Kami-sama does not need us to live in fear and trembling in order to love us and work miracles for us. Kami-sama simply loves us wherever we are in life and wants to work together with us. And as Kami-sama desires this interdependent relationship with us, humanity, Kami-sama also desires for us to live this out in the world with each other. Like any parent, Kami-sama wants us, Kami-sama's children, to help, support, and stand up for one another, to work together, and do what is necessary to live in harmony with one another. This idea made a lot of sense to me, not just because it sounds nice, but it reflected the ways that I had come to know God. The truth is, when I first met Andy Sensei and Lisa Sensei, I was in a very chaotic time in my life. I was fairly new to the area, and I had just left a political organization at that time. I was involved in very demanding political work for a few years that at that point, um, at that point, and to be honest, I didn't enjoy a lot of it. It constantly stressed me out, made me anxious, depressed, and I felt like I was on a hamster wheel, just constantly doing and doing and doing and not seeing results. And I constantly felt like I was behind. I felt like I had such a low capacity that it was hard to think, it was hard to think clearly, to make decisions, and too often I just heeded to the direction of the strongest personality in my organization. I knew I had to leave not because the, my ideas of the world had changed, or that I no longer saw the need to do what I can to build a new and better world, but I'd lost sense of, of myself. I was unwell, disconnected from others and myself, and something big at my core. As I left this organization, I had a lot of time on my hands. I had time to read poetry again, sometimes even write a little. 
and I started to feel more able to think and even feel. And I just really, really wanted to pray. Truthfully, I don't know if I've ever gone a day without prayer. This was something my mother instilled in me. My father traveled for work overseas a lot. And as a child, my evenings always ended with me and my mother one-on-one -on -one praying together. She would help me think through what and who I was grateful for. She taught me to recognize and see miracles everywhere. And she taught me to bring my concerns, the ways I hurt, the dreams I have, to Kamisama. Before breakfast, I was expected to pray at the altar in our home. My mom would always remind me that my Obachan was with us. She would remind me of our ancestors and those in the spirit world who still were with us, loved us, and wanted to support us in our dreams. And I believed her so much that sometimes I was scared to go to the bathroom, not wanting to have to put my ancestors through such a scene. And that said, um, as precious as prayer has been to me throughout my life, it had major baggage for me as well. I grew up in a religious group that is being talked a lot about in the news in Japan right now. Many in Japan are openly talking about this group's various abuses of its members, and how this religion is largely a political tool of the ruling party. For many reasons, I have strong misgivings about this institution. There are things I'm still healing from that I experienced in this group. I started my own process of leaving this religious group after I had a spiritual experience with Jesus as a teenager. That's hard to describe, but it was when I first truly felt hurt by God. Even, even though I had prayed for all of my life, for five or so years, I was very active in Christian communities, living in intentional Christian communities, going to church, prayer meetings. I especially liked to run prayer meetings. Yet as I continued down a path of religious activity, I often ended up in churches where prayer and faith were still being weaponized against people. Whether it was long hours of prayer to somehow change somebody's sexual orientation, or revival meetings where people openly prayed for this country to be restored as a Christian nation. I drifted towards more progressive churches, but even then I began recognizing that my own faith was so much about my individual inner life, and not necessarily about this world, about creating harmony outside of ourselves and our churches. So I got involved in political work, desperately trying to figure out how to do just that. And at that time, I had other people of faith who I organized alongside with, who understood that component of my life and supported me in it. But after a while, spiritual devotion became somewhat irrelevant to me. My religious past was a part of who I was, but it provided more nostalgia, than hope or direction. And over time, I had become skeptical of my own urges toward faith and prayer. I wondered often if I had only maintained these things in my life because I was programmed this way by my parents and their church. And maybe this is true to some degree, but the faith that my mom imparted into my life has provided me with a deep capacity for faith in people to transform and grow, including myself, and optimism. This faith has been a gift to me in my relationships and even in the political work I've done. Over the years, my faith has been renuanced and transformed over and over again, and yet it still remains. My mom introduced me to a gift I personally cannot deny or reject, which is prayer. Having an open, grateful, humble heart before Kamisama. After I had become disheartened with political work, the political work I was doing, I reached out to this church. I felt both direct
expressionless and yet stirred. At that point in my life, I mostly said brief thank yous to God or an occasional stressed out, help me. I lost sense of the type of prayer where I could feel my heart connect to God's heart. But I wanted that again. I didn't know much about Konko Kyo, but when I stumbled into it online and found out that there was a church nearby, I felt a strong urge to meet with the ministers. And they were patient and listened to me, and were both down to earth, relatable, kind people, and they were grounded in something I knew I wanted. That day, they expounded on this idea of Ayo Kakyo and talked about how, even though all of us are connected, built for interdependency, we're also connected to our ancestors, our roots, the people we came from, including our parents. And to be honest, it's not something I wanted to hear. Yes. At this point, honoring my ancestors made sense. And to some degree, that has always played a role in my life. But my parents, my parent, my relationship with my parents is complicated and has been difficult. As much as I talked about how much my mom has given me the gift of faith. There's a lot to say about that. And a lot of that is connected to the fact that I left their religion behind. And also, and I, I was open about my hurt and my resentment about it. But also the fact that I'm gay. And when she first found out I was gay, I was 21 years old, living across the country from my parents. I told my dad first by email. I asked him to relate it to her. I was too scared to break her heart. Oh, sorry. We didn't talk about it. But on her own, she decided she needed to pray for 40 days. That was all my dad told me. And at the end of those 40 days, I talked to my mom, who said that Heavenly Father told her that as long as I'm praying and follow my conscience, she can't argue with me. This surprised me, and I was thankful, but the truth is that through the years, she still struggled with this part of who I am, and this part of my life. And even as I got into a serious relationship and was engaged, she couldn't look at my partner in his eyes. She couldn't acknowledge him. It broke my heart. So for a while, I decided to stop talking to my parents. I avoided family get-togethers, stopped answering their calls and emails. I did this for about two years. By the point I had come to this worship hall, I had been thinking a lot about my parents, about how I still had so much hurt that they raised me in a religious organization that was harmful to me, to my best friends, to my siblings, and even to them, my parents. But also I was thinking about how there was so much about their families, their lives that I did not know. I felt disconnected from my roots and I knew that having a relationship with my parents could potentially play a role in discovering those stories and lives that molded my family and me. I also ultimately knew they loved me so much, even with these barriers, these tensions, I knew my parents loved me. When I was 16, I was, as I was leaving my parents' church, I anonymously started a blog where I talked about the corruption in, in that organization. And within months, church leadership had discovered it was me sent multiple legal threats and demanded that I meet with them. My father refused. He said that I was a child and that he was responsible for me. He saw it as inappropriate for a bunch of adults to interrogate a child of their own community. He met with them and faced their veiled threats and accusations. They came home 
stressed, worn out, and still warm towards me. He knew I was not trying to hurt anybody. He knew I was trying to do what I thought was right. And in those days, there was still tension between my parents and I. But even then, my, mo my mother told me she knew I was trying my best to be principled, to listen to God. Those memories stuck with me. Following my meeting with Andy Sensei and Lisa Sensei, I thought a lot about my roots, about my parents. And slowly, hesitantly, I decided it was time to redevelop a relationship with them. And they were so thankful. When I rang the doorbell, I heard my mom scream my name and run toward the door like an excited child. And she held me and cried and cried. And on that trip, I got to learn some more about my roots. I learned that my mother's grandmother was one of her favorite people and often took care of my mother. She was very, very, very short, and I was always smiling. My mother's grandmother, my great-grandmother, she lived late into her 90s and passed away when she fell off her roof, drying umeboshi. She was very, very active all her life. I also learned that my mother would wake up every morning at 4 a.m. to my grandmother's chanting. People in her area knew my grandmother to be a spiritual lady. My mother remembers women coming to their home all the time to seek advice and support about their struggles from my grandmother. She often helped families arrange their children's marriages. She sounded like a special lady, somebody people trusted, who grounded herself in prayer and made big and bold decisions because she loved people. During World War II, she took in dozens of children from the cities who lived in fear of the bombings, feeding them, clothing them, doing all she could to provide these children with as much sense of a comfort, security, and peace that could be possible during such a time. My mother told me about how when she was growing up, her mother often visited the Korean community in, in Toyama. My mother remembers tagging along as her mother did business in this community, talked to the people, and fed the hungry children. She remembers large gates around this community, and she remembers a sense of disdain that some Japanese had for this community. She also remembers my grandmother loving these people and deeply understanding that they are experiencing injustice. On this trip with my mother, I also found out that my grandfather's side is Korean, something that had only been insinuated before but not uh, that we may have Korean somewhere down in our lineage, but it's much closer than I was led to believe. This past year, I've continued to learn new stories about her, and overall I've been making more space to listen to her and my father. I've been learning to navigate the ways we disagree, but even as we've come to the, into tense moments, we continually realize our we continually realize that our love for each other is unconditional. They want to support me, and I want to support them. In July, as many of you know, the former Japanese Prime Minister was assassinated. He was killed by a child of somebody who grew up in the same church I grew up in. Immediately as the news was coming out, my mother and I called each other. It had been reported that he did this because of how the church bankrupted and ruined his family, and due to the Prime Minister's connections to this church. The assassin, Tetsuya Yamagami, believed this would draw the world's attention to, to the ongoing corruption of this organization. My mother, in a big way, understood his hurt, and so did I. And we cried on the since that day, we've had so many open-hearted, honest conversations on the phone. And in so many ways, I've come to understand that she made, why she made the decision she's made in her life. She has expressed her own heartbreak and suffering that she's experienced in this church. She even expressed regret. 
We're learning together how to share. How to talk about hard things. She told me at the end of that day, she doesn't care about the church or even its teachings. She's just thankful to learn how to pray and to know the living God. And she's so thankful that I do too. I was able to finally thank her for teaching me how to pray and for revealing to me so many times Kamisama's heart. The day I was leaving to return home from my last in-person trip, trip to my mom, she came to my bed and woke me up since she was going to be busy that morning and wanted a chance to say bye. And she whispered, please, next time, bring your friend when you come. And still she wasn't able to say my husband or partner, but before that she never talked about him, never mentioned him or interest in having him around. But she was trying. And it may not be perfect, but even though she may not fully understand our relationship, she loves me and she loves who I love. I know I am blessed to begin this process of healing with my parents. And a lot of people can't take that step for so many legitimate reasons. But I'm so thankful for this teaching of interdependency, and of connecting and honoring the roots of who we are, and the ways that this has stirred and shifted and opened my own heart. Though not the most frequent attender of this worship hall, I can say that every service I've attended as well as the times I've met with Lisa Sensei and Andy Sensei for Toritsugi have helped open up my heart to Kami-sama. To be around those who daily seek to live close to Kami, to see what that looks like, to see the results, has given me faith. To see how their faith challenges them, leads them to be present to the suffering, and leads them to make bold and big decisions out of love for this community and Kami-sama has given me faith. To see your families here, always working together to make these services happen, supporting one another, honoring those who have gone before us, has given me a glimpse of Kami-sama's Ayo Kakeo that interdependency, and that has given me faith. I don't exactly know how to define the divine or Kami-sama, but I know I love Kami-sama. I know that when I meet with a sensei for mediation or pray in my backyard or bedroom, and do what I can to live in a way that is open-hearted to Kami-sama, I receive blessings. When I sp make space in my life for Kami-sama, when I make space for gratitude, when I ground myself in the truth that I stand on the shoulders of so many, including my ancestors and those who struggled for a better world before me, I find clarity, I find wisdom, I find hope, healing, and miracles, and I find my deepest prayers answered. There's a quote in this church's brochure that comes from the voice of the universe. Faith is when the follower and Kami become close. Faith will fade if you stand in fear of Kami. Stay close to Kami. Kami is always close. The desire is for you to feel it, to know it, to know that Kami is for you. Kami-sama does not want you to obey out of fear Kami, with the support and communion of the Mitama spirits, wants to support us all to know the fullest life, one of mutual interdependency. I believe that this is both Kami and humanity's deepest desire, and that Kami-sama will work with us to create such a world where we can all depend on each other, where we can all support each other, where loving your neighbor is easy and natural. May we look closely to Kami, doing what we can to live in harmony with Kami's children and this earth, and to create a world that embraces our deepest desire. Thank you.
Let us recite closing prayer on page 15 in our prayer book. Dear Divine Parent of the Universe, we are, are deeply grateful for the way of mediation. We offer our heartfelt gratitude for your word of our blessings. Eternal, spiritual, temporal, and eternal. We pray your divine favor be granted to one and all, each and every day. Solemn acknowledgement. Four solemn clocks together to close the service. Thank you. 